find the x and y components of the following vector. The vector is a vector with a length or a magnitude of 300 meters per second, that's the length of the vector, at 45 degrees below the x-axis. So the vector is 300 meters per second, 45 degrees below the x-axis. Very simple question. Find the x and the y components. So again, first thing you always do is draw a picture. Always. Even if you think you know what you're doing, draw a picture. Because even if you get everything wrong in your test, if you draw a picture, you'll probably get a few points. So you should do that. So the length, uh, or the vector is 45 degrees below the x-axis. So if here's the x-axis, below the x-axis is here. So 45 degrees, that's a pretty close to it, like this. So this angle is 45 degrees below the x-axis, and then the vector itself has a magnitude of 300 meters per second. So what we want to do is we want to find out what the x and y component is. Now, the x component is going to be here, pointing in this direction, and the y component is going to be pointing down like this. The sum of those two components give, the mixture of those two give the total vector that we have, 300 meters per second. So there's a couple of ways you can do this problem. The first way I want to do it is I want to use the angle that's given in the problem, because like I told you, sometimes you're just going to be given an angle. So don't reinvent the wheel, use the angle that's given to you. Right? And then after we do that and get through with that, we'll, I'll, sh I'll kind of expand and show you something else that's important also. So if I'm going to use this angle here, then if you think about it, this dotted line here is going to define, um, I kind of ran out of space unfortunately, let me kind of move this out of the way here. 300, it's 300 meters per second, so what I want to write down is V is 300 meters per second, okay? So the vertical component here, which way does it go? Well, it goes down, because the vector is pointing down, so this is Vy, and we expect Vy to be negative for this problem because it's pointing down. And then Vx points horizontally like this, so this is Vx. So we expect Vx to be positive when we calculate everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this angle, and we're going to use trigonometry properly, but at the end of the day, once we calculate x and y, the, mag the numbers are going to be correct, but we have to check the angles because this vector is not defined from the x-axis here all the way around. It's defined in the kind of in the negative sense going down. So positive angles in trig go around like this. This is kind of going the other way. So we can still use the angle, but we just have to make sure that the answers we get make sense. So how do we calculate, uh, let's call this method number one. How do we calculate Vx? Vx is going to be equal to the magnitude of the vector, 300 meters per second. We're going to chop it like this. Notice that this is the angle here. The adjacent side of this triangle is the Vx direction. The opposite side of this angle is the Vy direction. So we're chopping it this way so Vx is going to be a cosine relation because it's adjacent, 45 degrees. So if we put this in here, what we're going to get is 300. What is cosine 45 degrees? It's 0 0.707. You can get that from your calculator. So then the Vx component vector, you multiply these guys together, you get 212. Uh, 0.1 meters per second. And then you have to ask yourself, is this the correct sign for Vx? Well, it's a positive number. This is a, I expect Vx to be positive, so I think this is correct, so I'm just going to circle it as is. And, you're, and that's correct. That's the right thing. That's the right thing to do. Now let's move over here and find the Vy component. So to find Vy, it's going to be the same exact hypotenuse, 300, but the sine of this angle, the opposite uh, here, is going to be the sine, which is going to give me uh, Vy. So it's going to be the sine of 45 degrees. So when I go in here, 300, what is the sine of 45 degrees? If you stick that in your calculator, you're going to get 0 0.707. Same thing as before. That's what the calculator gives you. And so Vx, you're going to calculate to be, you multiply these things together, you're going to get 212 meters, whoops, 212 0.1 because it's the same numbers, meters per second. So then you look at this, and actually I labeled this Vx. I apologize for that. This is Vy. This is Vy. 212 meters per second. Because the sign returned a positive number, we get a positive answer. Then you look at, back at your drawing. This is why it's really important to have a drawing. Because the vector is pointed down, we expected Vy to be negative, but we got a positive value for that. So that's actually not right. That's not the right answer. So what we're going to write down, we're going to kind of skip down here. You can right wrong sign if you want, or you could just kind of revise it down below and you can say really it's negative 
0.1 meters per second. I told you in the, the last couple of sections that when you calculate vector components, the answers you get, you should always get in the habit of looking at those answers and see if the directions make sense, if the signs are correct. If you don't have a negative answer on what you calculated and you think that you should, then you need to add it manually. The reason you have to add it manually is because this angle of this vector was not measured from the positive x-axis all the way around. The calculator, when you type this in and hit the sign button, it assumes that this vector is up here at positive 45 degrees because when you type in 45 and hit the sign button, it gives you the right answer, but it just assumes the vector is up here, positive y, positive x. That's why we got the answer we did. But you're smarter than that. You know the vector's not really up there, it's down there. So we use the number, because that's the correct, it's the correct number, but we have to insert the negative sign here. We verify this should be positive, that's correct, and then we get the answer. Now, let's do the exact same thing with a different, um, a different calculation, just to be totally sure that you, that you totally understand. Method number two, because you can, you have freedom. All I told you is there's a vector at 300 meters per second, 45 degrees below the x-axis, give me the components. I'm giving you two ways. One way, use the angle that you were given, totally fine. Here's another way. You can draw that picture and you can use a different angle. And it's really up to you which way you like to do it. But we're gonna learn you know, both ways so that you can have some freedom here. The vector is exactly the same. So I'm gonna draw it exactly the same. Uh, it's going to be 300 meters per second. But we know that this angle is 45 degrees. So if we know that that angle is 45 degrees, what would this angle be? Measuring positive uh, from the positive x-axis all the way around counterclockwise like we typically do. I told you in trig, we always go the po from the positive x-axis around. What would this angle be? Well, this is 90, this is 180, this is 270. And when you get back over to here, that's actually going to be 315 degrees. 315 degrees all the way here because back to the origin again, or to the x-axis 360, right? So if you take 360, which is a whole circle, and then subtract out the 45 here, what do you get? 315. So that's how we know that this angle is 315 degrees. So we can do the exact same calculation uh, using 315 degrees. The Vx is going to be equal to the hypotenuse, 300 times cosine, because cosine goes with chopping to x, 315. When you put this in, the calculator knows 315 means you're all the way around over here, so we expect it to give us the correct sign. So you get 300, and then what you're gonna get is 0 0.707, and so Vx, you're gonna get 212.1 meters per second. Not a big surprise, what are you gonna get for Vy? You're gonna have 300, but you're gonna multiply times the sign of what, 315, same angle. And so what you're gonna get is 300. When you take 315, the calculator knows, 315's all the way down here, so it's gonna give you the correct sign for this, and you're gonna get negative 0 0.707. So when you multiply these together, you'll get Vy is equal to negative 212.1 meters per second. And again, even though you think the signs are right, you always check, is this positive? Does this make sense? Well, it's going that way, should be positive. This is negative, does that make sense? Yeah, it's going down, it should be negative. They're equal uh, magnitudes in the components. That makes sense because it was going at 45 degrees, so if I draw a dotted line here and a dotted line here, it should be about the same. It should be exactly the same, actually. And that's it. So vector components, we've done several problems. I could work 25 more problems. Um, but at some point I have to decide when to cut it and go on to the next thing. I think we've worked enough to get you comfortable with it, but just keep in mind that we're gonna do it a lot because almost every problem will have vectors in it and we will be chopping components all the time. All right, and we've done a lot in this class. We've gone from an introduction to what physics is, we've done uh, significant, we've done uh, scientific notation, we've done units, we've done unit conversions, we've done displacement, we've done distance, we've done average velocity, we've done average speed, and then we've talked about vectors and all the vector components. We've talked about adding vectors graphically even. Now in the next you know, sets of lessons to come, we'll be continuing on, we'll be working with vectors more, we'll be adding vectors together, but not graphically, we'll be adding the components together to find out how to find the vector sum without drawing all the arrows everywhere. And then we'll go really start talking about the physics topics of motion. We'll talk about motion in one direction with acceleration, finding out how, thing, how to calculate all those quantities. Then we'll talk about projectile motion of like a baseball being thrown through the air with gravity. And then we'll talk about energy, and we'll talk about work, and we'll talk about lots of cool things. But 
Stick with me every step of the way, and I promise you I'll do my best to assume you know absolutely nothing about any of this stuff. If you are willing to work and solve problems and, and, and build your skills with me, then I guarantee that you'll have fun and you'll also really, really learn physics. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.